The arrow doesn't want to move. It's still pointing to the same spot no matter where I turn it. Oh well, I hope we get this right. Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California and I'm in the Southern Hemisphere. Here in the United States, I'm actually in the Northern Hemisphere. Gary talks about how he from Australia was in the Southern Hemisphere. So we are here in the Northern Hemisphere. I've had a question from Norma Chambers, but she's not the first. She wrote me on what does it mean on having a garden facing south because she was explaining that it's different for everyone. Well, as far as north, south, east, and west, it's only different if you're in the northern or if you're in the southern hemisphere. But as far as the direction changing, that doesn't change. I want you to feel really good, Norma. I don't know my directions that well either. I do know, let's step over here, that the sun rises there. So I know that's east. And I watch it go across the sky, which makes that south. And it sets over there, which is west. So that much I do know, which makes that down there north. Okay. Yes, a lot of people say make sure your garden faces south and that's the best way to grow and all that. Let's do some little running around here for a minute. My garden on the deck faces south. Okay, so this wall behind me back there faces south, which I just pointed to you. Well, let's go this way. Sorry, south, that way. So I have the sun on my deck all the time and the sun is behind me now now I will say keep in mind that summer spring fall and winter it changes because as we now are going into the fall and winter the Sun is going further down in the sky which means I have to cover my furniture because the Sun comes into the window and it will bleach it out and kill it <laughs> so I know that in the fall and in the winter the sun is very low in the sky coming straight into my windows. That's all I really know. I do know that my deck gets a lot of sun. So as far as growing, as you can see, that is really good, but she's right. Or I should say Norma's right. Just because I have a south facing deck here and a south facing garden doesn't mean it's the best. Let's go look at some other places that are south. Now here in this part of the yard, this wall here where the hummingbirds feed up there is a south facing garden. I'm not going to be able to grow that much. It's not even in the sun. Look at this. Let's walk through here. This is south facing. This doesn't do me any good as far as growing. I got an orange tree here. I got a nest box here that Gary put up. And there's no way I can grow here. So this is south facing. I mean, it's beautiful and the hummingbirds love it. They're up there on the window. But as far as growing, this is a south facing garden here. So this isn't going to do me any good. So because something is south facing doesn't necessarily mean that is the right place to grow. Let's go see if we can find more directions in my garden. Let's see what's going on in a different part of the garden. Now I'm in my front garden, the garden that's in the front of the house. I mean, I have to admit it did really good but this is a south facing garden. Why? Because again, the sun comes up on that side, which is on the east. I can watch the sun rise. The sun will go all the way across as it is right now. And then it will land, land. <laughs> it will go down back there, which is west. But guess what? Look behind me. Yep, great big pine trees. So at this point, it doesn't matter if I'm in the south because I don't get sun here. I get very little sun. Yet the plants did really, really well. We had 
a lot of zucchini as you saw on tomatoes, but this is what you would call a south facing garden because let's, they're south and the sun would be up in the sky facing this way. But even in the summer, I did not get sun in the front garden that much because of the pine trees. So if you have a south facing, let's say window, and that's usually what they're talking about, a south facing window. If you've got a skyscraper next door and it's blocking your sun, it doesn't matter how south you're facing. If you don't get sun, you don't get sun. So in the front yard, which is a beautiful south facing garden, I don't get any sun, not through the pine trees. Now, once it leaves the pine trees and it gets over there, I do get a little bit of sun, uh, enough hours to grow vegetables in. So to explain why is it important and what does it mean? That is what it means is generally if you were in an area where it was clear and you had a house sitting there, you would try to find what's called a south facing garden. So the sun, you'll get as much sun as possible during the growing season. But if you are really close, your houses are close and you've got buildings and you've got trees and you've got all that going on, then it doesn't matter if you're south facing. Now, north facing, which is the back of the house here. I can walk over here and show you. I could not grow anything. I started, I think you remember early on, I was gonna plant over here against the house. I thought, oh, this will be a good place to grow things. Well, I have grown tomatoes here, but that was an accident. A tomato plant came up and grew. But this wall never gets sun. It doesn't see the daylight of sun at all. So it, for me, it wouldn't work, but this block wall behind me has created enough reflection that the tomato plant that did come up and grow here, it did work because it got reflection. You can change the direction of light. We are doing it on an indoor garden right now and we'll get more into it as we get into the garden. But as far as gardening, Yes, you do want something that's going to get sun. You don't have to stop and think which is east, which is west, what's south, what's north. You don't really need to do that. What you need to do, and we can walk over to my garden, what you need to do is figure out what gets the most sun and what you're planting. There's a lot of plants that don't like a lot of sun. You don't want to put lettuce in direct hot sunlight or it's going to grow in bulk like mine does a lot. And it does bolt here because we are warm and we do have a lot of sun. So there's certain things that don't do as well in direct sunlight. I found out stevia for me doesn't do well in direct sunlight, even though the tag said plant in direct sunlight. When I did that and I put it in my garden, which was south facing, all my stevia died. And then I found out not here, you know, maybe in another state where it's cooler, it would do better in direct sun, but we get so warm that the stevia actually appreciates being here where it gets morning sun. And then as the afternoon goes on and the sun drops down beyond the house, this is all shaded and the ginger, the turmeric and the stevia love it. So what you have to do is decide what you're gonna grow and how much sun it really needs. Now, you know my garden, you step in here, is what you would call in the south. Definitely a south-facing garden. As I showed you the other side of the house, that wall, this wall faces south, which is directly behind me. So I get sun pretty much all day here. But of course, I've got trees back there, and I've got a mountain. So it's gonna drop down maybe sooner for me than it would for the people beyond the mountain or the people that are on top of the mountain. There's a house up there. They're going to get sunlight. Let me see if I can swing you around. They're gonna get sunlight more than me, probably an, even an extra hour. So it doesn't always matter, as Norma said, isn't it different for different people? Absolutely. I don't wanna to point to neighbor's houses, but there are houses that sit in a gully uh, I'm going to call it a gully or a canyon. 
I don't care what time of the day it is. A lot of those houses don't get any daylight at all. I've actually looked at houses years ago through here. They're in the shade all day. So it doesn't matter what way it's facing. So the main thing for you would be, it is good to know, I guess, you know, Gary's really good at knowing which way is north and south when he's driving. I'm more like, get the directions out, make a right here and a left here. And if I have to take another way home because let's say the road is closed or something, I'm in trouble because I don't know which way I'm going. So then I gotta get out the GPS or something. But the point is, when you hear somebody say, plant your garden in a south facing um, sunlight, it, it's not as important as you think because we are growing all over here. Gary's got his garden down below and you've seen that. And he's got sunshade, sunshade all day because of the way the top is built. And he's got the wood slats, so he gets sun and then shade. That is actually really, really good. The, sun, the um, plants never cook that way, even in the hottest days. So the thing is, is it the same? Yes, your direction will never change. Does the sun change? Yes, it does. Because right now, for the next, oh, next month and a half, two months, the sun's going to come lower in the sky and it's going to be facing into the house more and this particular garden, which is good for the winter, will get a lot of sun. And then as it changes at the, here for us in the end of December around Christmas time, then the sun will start to rise up in the sky again. And then as we go into summer, it leans back a little bit. So this yard does get sun all the time. So the main thing to do for you, no matter where you are, because it is different for everybody, is you have to figure out, you live there, you know your property, or your window if you're growing in the house, or your room, your spare room that you've turned into a garden like we're doing, you have to know which window, which area is getting the most sun. And that's all you need to know. That's really the most important thing. You don't want to plant in an area in your yard or wherever you're planning, plant, planning on planting, you don't want to plant in an area that doesn't get sunlight, like I showed you. This is a south facing wall. The other side of the house, the way it's situated, is what you would call a north facing wall that gets no sunlight, zero, a big zero. And even though I did grow, well, I did grow quite a bit. I grew lettuce, I grew bok choy, a lot of things grew. It didn't grow maybe as good. I don't know. It might have grown fine. I kind of stopped. But the point is, it didn't get sunlight. But I did get some tomatoes coming up. But they were volunteers. They came up in the driveway, in the rocks. And it worked. So for you, that's the difference. When you hear somebody say, oh, make sure you're growing in a south-facing garden, it just means that it's going to get the most sun provided your sun isn't blocked from something. If I had these avocado trees bigger than they are, Gary trimmed a lot of them down, way up, this garden would get no sun. My Moringa tree back there faces south. If you can see it, it's up there. Guess what? This past year and last year when that Moringa tree took off and got really big, I couldn't grow zucchini under it because it created too much shade. So because of the shadow, I could not get anything to grow under it. The other Moringa tree in my yard, we can walk over there. That Moringa tree on that wall that I'm growing zucchini on now is what you would call a south facing wall. The sun, I don't wanna get the sun in the camera, is straight up in the sky behind me now, but it is creating a big shadow here because of the pepper tree. So even though this whole area is beautiful south facing, I cannot grow under this pepper tree because the pepper tree shades this area all day. That's all I'm gonna get is shade. Behind me with the wall is far enough away from the pepper tree where I can grow all kinds of zucchini and squash that I'm growing right now because the pepper tree, that is, let me swing you around behind me, is not throwing any shadows. Even though the sun is dropping, it's not throwing any shadows, but look at this. As the sun is starting to drop down more and more, I am starting to get more shade. 
See how far the shade goes? So the most important thing is the area. If you've got a big football field area like I've got here, pretty much, and you didn't have a tree like that behind you, you could grow, it doesn't matter what way it's facing. I mean, there's north, there's south, there's east, and there's west. It wouldn't matter, because you're getting sunlight all day. So that's the only thing. So if somebody says, oh, you must grow in the south facing, don't worry about it. You judge on your own. And then if you need more light, you figure out how you're gonna get more light. A light colored wall will create more light. Light reflects off a light colored wall. So it can send light over to plants that are not near it. And you could actually create your own microclimate as far as lighting. You can do that yourself. You could do it with mirrors. You'll see how we're gonna do that. There's a lot of different ways to create more light. And that's all there is to it. So that's what they mean when they say it. The sun comes up from the east. It comes across the sky. There is south behind me. There is the west where the sun sets. And see, I have a mountain. So I lose the sun, let's say an hour before anybody else. And that house up on top of that hill, they have an extra hour, at least a good hour of sunlight if they had a garden at their house. I don't know if they do or they don't, but if they had a garden, they have an extra hour. And they sit higher. They probably get an extra half hour or so of light in the morning. So everybody's property is different. It's the shape, the way, the way it's situated, it is different. And like I said, the most important thing is water, feeding your soil with your kitchen scraps, composting in place, feed the dickens out of your plants with your own plants, and make sure they get some sunlight. They don't all need a lot of sunlight. We had tomato plants growing in the shade on the north side of the house. And that's basically it. So you have to judge your own property. You figure it out. You live there. You're the one that knows. And then you should be able to grow. But like I said, this Moringa tree was bigger last year. This year, you know, with all the cold we had in the freeze, we did trim it way down. But I couldn't grow much of anything last year under that Moringa tree because it was so full and shaded that even though this was a south-facing garden, that Moringa tree shaded out this whole section of the yard. Remember, people change their own climate, their own sunlight and everything by planting different plants against their house. If they want their house cooler and they're getting sun beating on it all day, they may put trees around there so they don't get the late afternoon sun. Afternoon sun is always your hottest sun. So I think I've answered your question. Norma, I'm with you. I need the directions written down and I need to know if I'm going right or left. That's all I know. Gary's got a compass. He showed me his compass. He said, this is how it works. It's like, okay. I was in the Brownies and the Girl Scouts. I should know all that. But you know what I was doing when we were camping? I was leaving the tent and going into the forest and they used to have to hunt me out and bring me back and put me to work because they didn't want me running off. I only cared about going out and seeing nature. I wasn't learning all the stuff I should have learned. So I hope I've answered your question, Norma. I have had other people ask, is it important for me to grow uh, on a south facing? No, the most important thing, because some people don't have that sunlight, is to pick out the sunniest place in your yard. And if it's too sunny and you're in a really hot area like Arizona, you may not want it so sunny. Too much sun, the plants don't like either. So you've got to kind of judge your own plants, judge what you're doing, and you'll figure it out. It's all trial and error. If it doesn't work, try something else. Just look for an area that gets sunlight. You want at least six hours of sunlight. If you can get a little bit more for vegetables, eight hours is good. That's mainly what you're looking for. An area that gets six to eight hours of good sunlight. And then you should be good to go. Can't knock down those big skyscrapers next door if you've got them. There's not much you can do on that, but you will be able to figure it out, I'm sure. There's always ways of creating light. Like I said, reflective. You may have to paint walls that are dark, lighter. You could do it the opposite if you were trying to make it cooler, even though 
black or dark green, it may be warm to touch, it doesn't reflect light. But when you're looking for light, you paint it light and you'll get more light. So I hope I've answered your question. These papayas are facing south, dead south. That is south. So that is not the reason they're doing good. The reason they're doing good is because I am composting in place. They get a good amount of sunlight. Nothing's blocking their sunlight. And they get a lot of water. They do like their water because the papayas are so big. And that's the main thing. Feed your plants, get as much sun, and you should be good to go. You'll figure it out. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye!